insatiable hunger to advance and honor the space in which we live. I know that there's a way to do that. And while I get Avatar kind of shows the extreme other side, like you have technology versus nature essentially in this movie. Um, but I love that when these pendulum swings into the extremes of, you know, only nature, bows and arrows, connected to the earth, all of that living and sustaining from that beautiful energy and all the way over to disconnected technology. And when the pendulum swings to those extremes, ideally for an audience, when it settles, we're being invited to find the balance. Mm -hmm. That I don't believe that James Cameron's message is to abandon technology, leave advancement and go out and live, you know, like, um, you know, like hobbits of the Shire. Right. That I get that the invitation is how do we balance it? How do we stay conscious? Even simple things like recycling and organic foods and how do we deal with, with um, pollution and things like that. There's ways to balance our lives. And the real question is, what as an audience are we willing to walk away with? Are we just going to walk away with the acknowledgement that this was a technically spectacular movie? Or as some critics have said, oh, it's just poorly written and the text is really clumsy and, and the story's kind of hackneyed and, and predictable. Well, yeah, it is. Okay. It's there, was, there were still surprises for me. Of course, you know, I thought the same thing. Okay, this is as it's progressing, this is pretty much Pocahontas. I thought the same thing. But then, you know, there were so it was so multifaceted. And it was it was just so all encompassing, everything. It was it, you know, something that really I loved was her seeing him being attacked by all the animals and then her making that choice that, you know, I could disrupt the balance of of him not belonging here and, and you know and create balance again if if he's gone or i could go in and protect him and bring him maybe not you know maybe he can make a contribution maybe there's a reason why he's here but then her going through and and you know and, and killing all these animals and to protect him and and then her doing it so painfully so and the uh the respect that she had for the animals as she you know took her knife out of them and then she blessed them and thanked them for showing up and then him just how like most of us like clumsily thanks you know you really saved my ass type of thing and, and without even being able to acknowledge the the loss or the sacrifice that was yeah, made yeah and and her just saying no you killed all of these animals Right. It didn't have to happen this way. Yeah. You are an idiot and yeah. your idiocy created this. Yeah. And I totally agree. And right before that moment in, in the film, what I loved was here she's about to kill this person mm -hmm. and this simple little seed lands on her bow. And I love that the way James Cameron teed this up was that she was willing to see a message in that, see something mm -hmm. that and it was great that later, just a couple minutes later, this this avatar, this Jake Sully, is being covered by these things and he keeps wanting to swat them away. Unconscious and unwilling to see a message or see anything in that. And what that reminds me of and, and maybe what the audience gets to take a look at is this movie will give you as much as you're willing to take message wise and it kind of reminds me of that statement for those who have ears to hear and eyes to see or however that goes that that idea that you know you can go and just see that this is a technologically awesome movie but you could also go and have a profound life-changing breakthrough about how you show up on this planet how you interact how you engage how you're connected and literally change everything about the way your life functions. If that's what you are willing to get out of it. And as I've gone back and I watched it a second time, there was more there. There were more messages. There was more nuance. There was more intricacy, which I appreciate about James Cameron and the Weta team, how their attention to detail 
gives me an opportunity to see more mm -hmm. and to receive more breakthroughs and revelations and uh, aha moments because of how I um, go into the movie, willing to see something. And if it, that weren't the case, there wouldn't, it wouldn't be making as much money as it is because in order to make this much money, people have to want to see it more than once. Yep. And that has definitely been my experience. Most of the people I know have seen it at least twice. Yeah. And that is a powerful message to each of us that when a movie is so layered and so dense with, with possibilities that each time we see it, a new awakening, a new moment of awareness comes. That's something I want to embrace. That's something I want to experience. That's something I want to continue to have in, in my life and encourage people to go see it. I mean, I can't even think of how many people I've told to go see this movie. And, you know, when you had told me you only saw it a portion of the way through, um, I was amazed because I couldn't even imagine stopping watching it. Mm -hmm. But I know you were in a hotel in Jordan and sleepy and it was the middle of the night and you were falling asleep during it. But I, I, the, it was, it was profound. It's, it, it's kind of what I was thinking tonight. I was like, how the heck did I ever even fall asleep in any moment? Other than I'm sure it was by like 6 a.m. and hadn't slept yet. But yeah, it was really, I, I kept thinking to myself, there's no, did I even see this part? I can't even remember this part. And this story is so intricate. How did I, how could I, how did I miss any of this? Yeah, I kept thinking that. Yeah, I, I love, I mean, even now, I, we were talking about this before we went on the air here, that we could pick just individual moments of that and ha do entire shows about it. And I kind of mm -hmm. feel like we're not going to do this movie justice in a conversation mm -hmm. in the 30 minutes that we talk about it for the show. And so I definitely invite the audience to go back and watch it again. Open to other messages, see the nuance, look at the detail as to how the, even how Weta built the creatures that all of the creatures and animals have similar properties that connect them to all the other pieces and connect them to the Navi people. And what is in the message of the way the roots and the trees interact with each other and storing and connecting and communicating through this planet. I mean, there's so much to get out of this and so much to take away and so much to look at how I interact in my life with people. How connected do I feel? How willing am I to make that, that connection? Because I love that, you know, one of the ways in which James Cameron created something new for the sci-fi world was this kind of almost neurological connection that comes out of their ponytail and connects to animals and to each other as a way to communicate and connects to the trees and, and shares information. That's a beautiful visual way to explain that, but that's a reality. We can be experiencing that as individuals if we choose to connect, just get connected with each other and, and engage in that way. You know, when they're in that interlink, that, that, that bonded position with an animal and that animal gets shot, they feel it. Yeah. And what that, what that instantly brought to me was the idea of war and killing. If I chose to use my magical neuro ponytail and connect it to this planet and be connected to the people around the world, it would pain me. I would feel the pain of someone dying of someone being oppressed, of someone being broken, of someone being abused. I would feel that and it would matter to me if I chose to make that connection. And I get that people know what this is. Mothers definitely know what this is. I know that mothers have that connection to their children. And I've heard stories of mothers who can, who their child is hundreds and hundreds of miles away and can wake up and know something's not working. Something is awry and they know and they all of a sudden the phone rings or they make a call and find out that yes something's not working there is a connection so this is real this isn't sci-fi james cameron didn't invent this but he definitely made a beautiful visual 